there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Today, in the UK, the average man will have 1.7 children. But for some, that number is simply not enough. They right, are close to 40 kids. Some dads do their best to support their huge families. You make a kiss for that. Others leave their offspring behind. The last time I had sex was nine months ago and the person was pregnant. While for some, it's too late to make up for past mistakes. Well, I know he's told me to f*** for that. I can't make up for what I've done. But no matter how different these dads may appear... Get all the girl that would be the and start the wiggy. You just flirt with every single it, girl it, I know. It goes with my job. They all share certain similarities. A single by any chance? Can I have your number? I've never carried a, a condom before in my life. <laughs> Welcome to the world of the serial dad. Sex is all there is. I see that's bad, that is, Dad. Sit down, man. Sit down. Good girl. In Ebervale, 56-year-old Mike Holpin lives with two of his grown-up daughters, Hayley and Rhiannon, and his latest fiancée, Diane. I'm as fertile as sin. I don't believe in contraception, and I love sex. Over the course of 40 years, Mike has spread his seed far and wide. He's had so many kids, he can't remember the exact amount. Me and my mate Tony was working it out one day, and we worked it out. I got close to 40 kids. So Mike has developed a novel way of keeping track of his offspring. The top one's here. These are my grandchildren. Mike claims to have had his first sexual experience at the age of nine. His eldest child is 37, whilst his youngest is only three, an age gap of 34 years. Well, I've got 22 kids, are calling my name, and there's about 18, probably a few more, that don't. Mike's tally of over 40 children would make him one of the most prolific fathers in the country. I thought you were like me, innit, on this game. But of the 20 women he's had children with, only six of these relationships lasted any length of time, and the majority ended prematurely because of Mike's cheating and heavy drinking. Just gonna f feed him now. Pet snake Issy is particularly fond of a frozen meal. Mike's love of reptiles began in his youth when he worked as a fairground operator. This is where he also honed his skills as a ladies' man. The boys working on, on rides like that, they're there for one reason, and that's to pull the women. And good-looking boys are better, <laughs> but funny boys are spectacular. You've got to try manoeuvring now. Me, I just tell my I want sex. Fancy a run? If it's a then <laughs> they're not really up for it. If it's a yes, then great. In spite of Mike's extraordinary baby-making career, he is no longer in touch with any of the mothers, and only a handful of his children even speak to him. To make matters worse, over the years, Mike has seen the majority of his children taken away by social services. Due to my drinking and my womanising, most of my kids have gone through the care system, and it makes me feel like because they've suffered. They took them from me because I'm an alcoholic. I'm still an alcoholic, it's just I don't practice it. A lot of people turn their back on me. But now, Mike claims he's a changed man. He's given up the booze and is on a mission to win his children back. When they all went into care, I made a promise, no matter how long it, it took, I will get my kids home. I miss all the fun we used to have. So I suppose getting them back, my life will be set, it'll be perfect. In South London, 38-year-old father of 12, Glen Ray Walker, also known as Rashan, is hard at work. When I'm polishing this car now, I like to, so that my body keeps flexible. 
Rashan is a dancehall champion and is well known for using his skills on the dance floor to meet women, at least 10 of whom have fathered his children. He calls these women his baby mothers. I enjoy dancing, going out, dressing up nice, looking nice, and let all the girls them look at me like, whoa, here yeah, am I, yeah. But it's not just popular with the ladies. Rashan is well known for his hard-working and fun-loving attitude. It's quite warm in here. This is Josh, that's the boss' son. Got me. So, he's little junior. And this is Shaggy, my yeah, friend. Man. Me and him is cool, and everything is nice, always. Yes, that <laughs> Rashan's had his fair share of relationships in the past, but any possible baby mother also has to bring something to the table. And what I like, most of my baby mother, they work anyhow. So they are not like loafers or sitting down relying on benefit, because I love women that work. If you're not working, I won't go out with you. I have to make sure you're in a good job as well. I enjoy working on nice cars. One day, I would like to own one of this car, but with so much kids, I cannot afford to buy one yet. In the north of England, Keith MacDonald is a minor celebrity. Known locally as the Sunderland Shagger, at only 29, rumor has it that he's fathered at least 15 kids by nearly as many women. Well, the news people seeing I'm a sponge, yeah, I'm a love rat and everything else, but I don't think I am. Well, born, I don't know if all these kids are mine. And then the people are bringing up seeing I like I've got 10, 11. I seen up one day and it was like 15 kids by 15 different women. I'm like, hey, what the hell? Fucking freeze. <laughs> Keith is so fertile, he made a girl pregnant the first time he ever had sex, allegedly when he was only 14. Although he denies this. Still to this year, I know for a fact that this kid's not mine because you can't produce at the age of 14. Impossible. Allegedly, Keith was already a father of two by the age of 15, and it seems his magical sperm is still going strong. The last time I had sex was nine months ago, and the person's pregnant. Keith doesn't work and spends most of his time playing computer games. With his infamous reputation, the press dubbed him Britain's most feckless father and Britain's worst dad. He makes very little attempt to see his children. In fact, the mother of his ninth child claims he went as far as faking his own death in order to avoid having to babysit. But Keith says he's had enough and wants to change his ways. So he's looking for a job to get back on his feet to try to shake off his bad reputation. Listening skills. I'm not good for listening. I just get on with the wrong deal. Field seals. See, I'm working out of fields and crap. But with no qualifications and no references, he says it's difficult to find work. Hi, Matt. I'll come in to see if you've got any work with. Um, not at the moment. Things are quite tight at the moment. Yeah, thanks a lot. Like, sometimes I go in looking for work and then they tell you to drop off a CV. I'm sorry we don't have any vacancy at the moment, but if you don't mind, you can leave your CV here. Uh, I haven't got a CV at the moment, but I can drop one off for you. And CV would be alright, like, but I've never made a CV. The job hunting isn't going too well, but Keith isn't letting it get him down. In fact, he has grand plans to move away to a new city for a fresh start. And once again, it's not just work he's after. To find a potential girlfriend, for starters, move away from here, go somewhere where no one knows us, and then start fresh all over. Because I am trapped by the past, I am I. Coming up, Rashan is getting ready to hit the town. I could put on any outfit and pull a lady. And Mike Holpin gives his son some valuable relationship advice. Doggy style, if she's ugly, isn't it? Oh, there she is, birthday girl. <laughs> 
47-year-old Nick Portman runs a successful pub and club in Newport, Wales. Yeah, tonight's uh, quite busy. We've got a 50th, which is downstairs in the main function room itself. Upstairs, we've uh, 18th. Um, I'd rather go to the 18th. <laughs> so far, Nick has had 10 kids and three grandchildren and is always on the lookout to impress the ladies with his man about town status. Yeah. Are you from the 18th, love? Uh, no. No, nope, the other party is 50th. Just, 50th, just through there, OK? <laughs> Nick's serial dad status is due to him jumping from one woman to another over the last 20 years, leaving him with a relaxed attitude towards his relationships with women. The children I've had, it's basically been a couple from each mother. There was no plans of having a big family whatsoever. It was just things happen and, and I enjoy. Despite his busy schedule, Nick manages to see his large family regularly. I work for a living. A lot of people out there can't work and have got kids. I am proud that I can give them this, give them that, and make them happy. Nick's latest fiancée is Lauren, who at 20 is 27 years his junior, and they already have one child together. Three months into our relationship, he proposed to me when I was away. I come back and he just said, here's your ring, you know what it is. Lauren was only 17 when they met, and being with an older man who already has an extensive family has its difficulties. I think it's weird having children older than me. I'm 20, Anthony's 24 and Ashley's 23. So there's about four years difference between us. The relationship I'm in now with Lauren, we've got a 10 month old uh, baby. And if I've got to go to work, she'll want me home and I can't be home. I like to do my thing. Uh, if I want to go out, I want to go out, I'm going out. This is Amy, one of the bar staff. Hi, how are you? This is, this is Demi. Hello. Uh, she works here as well. Well, she pretends to work. He's the most flirtiest man I have ever met. He will flirt with any girl. You just flirt with every single girl it, I know. It, it goes with my job. Hello, Troy Hi, uh, this is Abby. Hi. Yeah. Hi. He his off carefully. I'm not going to answer that, because so I might purge your Nick. <laughs> he gets on with them. Yes. It's because of a relation. I'm going to leave it at that. Lauren accepts that Nick feels a reputation as a ladies' man goes with the job, but she still struggles when she sees him in action. Half the time, he don't know he's doing it. As far as it goes, really, don't he? He just flirt with him as far as it goes. My first love. <laughs> this is one of my, my daughter, my son, next daughter, the next daughter, the next daughter, the next daughter, the next daughter. Dad of 12, Rashan, juggles his social life with seeing his kids and maintaining healthy relationships with his baby mothers. Who want ice cream? Me! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Tonight, Rashan is looking after five of his children, but planning for these evenings can get complicated, as nearly every child comes from a different mother. Because I have to work, like, five days a week, Saturdays and Sundays, that's the only time I really have. I try to I spend as much time I as I can with them. <laughs> Spell your name for Daddy. R-U-S-H-A-N-E. Woo! <laughs> Having kids, it's good. But it's to maintain them. It's to look after them. It's to deal for them. And I'm, I'm not going to say I'm 100% with my child because I'm not. Give me a kiss for that. Rashan's children love spending time with their dad and speak to him almost daily on the phone. But for daughter Renee, keeping in touch with all her brothers and sisters is complicated. It's, I think it's nice because like it's a big family, but so, like we don't see each other that often. So I think you don't you don't really feel like you have that many brothers and sisters in a way. Rashan is not on good terms with all of his baby mothers, but he doesn't let that get in the way of seeing his children whenever he can. I don't know no one's mum here. You know everyone's mum, but I don't know, know the people's mum. 
I think the man they do uh, quite a good job because they go them up to um, have manners and respect and I also do whatsoever I can. The man they know what I'm like anyhow so they will make sure they do the best for my kids and any other kids they have as well. I don't think the mum's really associating herself with each other. I want she finds play. it a little bit stressful sometimes. Yeah. Having so many children with like, so many different mums. I think sometimes like they give him stress for like money and stuff, but he, got, he goes pretty well to be honest. Bye! Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. See ya. Alright. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> This is gonna happen. Ah, I just squashed it. In Ebervale, Wales, father of 40 Mike Holpin is on a quest to reconnect with his estranged children, many of whom turned their back on him because of his alcoholism, while others were taken into the care system. Come on, Enzo. Today, he's attempting to reach out to his 21 year old son, Luke whom he fell out with a few years ago. Hi, Dad. All right, son. Yeah, what's up? Well, listen, is Luke about? <coughs> well, I know he's told me to fuck off and that. Yeah. But he's my blood and I can't let it go, Dad. Luke lives with another one of Mike's 15-plus sons, who's also called Mike. Mike Jr. is on good terms with his dad. What's Luke's number? Um, Dad, I, I can't give it to you. All right, all right. Well, ask him if he'll text me and I'll ring him back. All right, no problem, Dad. All right, Dad, I gotta go see you soon. All right, <laughs> I love you, son. All right, love you too. Try, Dad. Try, babe, try. Uh, I spoke to Mike, I did. Well, he won't give me Luke's number. And uh, he said Luke told me to fuck off. It seems that no matter how hard he tries, some of Mike's kids want nothing to do with him. Well, I want to see him because he's my son at the end of the day. He's off, my offspring. Of course, I want to see him. I, I think we need to talk, you know, about things he said and about things I've said. I blame myself for the way Luke has reacted to me. I feel rotten my kids being brought up by someone else because it was my job and I was too drunk to, to really care. I don't even know what else to say. <sighs> Back in North London, father of 12, Rashan, has a night off from looking after his kids. So he's preparing for a big night out. But first, he has to decide what he wants to wear. These are the type of clothes that I enjoy wearing. A bit like Michael Jackson, a bit shiny, a bit flashy. This is one of my boots, special design. Most people know me by just big boot Rashan. Rashan has always had a wear with the ladies and he knows where he gets it from. My dad was a wild man. He used to be a man that woman always loved. He used to be a joker, he used to dance. So I think I've get with the woman thing from my dad's side. I could put on any outfit and pull a lady. But in the past, his love for the ladies has got him into trouble. Rashan has struggled to stay faithful to one woman, which could be why he's fathered so many children to so many different partners. I'm not gonna say I'm one of the easiest men to deal with. I give stress. I could go out and maybe meet someone, sleep with them, and then the woman that I'm with heard about it, and then I still expect she's to take me back. Now, if I'm going to a funeral, I'll wear this one. But Rashan claims he's no longer a love rat and is ready to settle down with one lady. Getting so much kids, it's not really nice. I wouldn't say it's a nice thing, because sometimes a lot of women get hurt. Rashan says his days of womanizing may be behind him, but there's one part of his life he's definitely not ready to give up. Whenever I go out, I like to enjoy myself. And if you meet me dancing, you have to accept me dancing. And no one gonna spoil my joy.
Determined to heal the broken relationship with his son Luke, Mike Holpen has come up with a plan to get back into his good books. All right, mate. I'm after a football arm. I'm going to get my son Luke something for his birthday belated and hopefully see him, at least bury the arch at with him. Because we're blood after all. You probably kick it at me, but there you are. Years of heavy drinking have not only affected Mike's relationships with his children, it's also taken a huge toll on his health. Six months ago, he suffered a near-fatal heart attack. When the ambulance woman said to me, you're having a heart attack, I didn't feel that heart attack. The love for my kids and the promise I made, nothing was going to shift her. Because of Mike's ailing health, he's determined to put things right with as many of his 40 kids as he can. 23-year-old son Mike Jr. is one of the few he's on speaking terms with. I stand closer, stand up straight. Fuck off. But his other son, Luke, is nowhere to be seen. Luke was going to come over, see Dad and talk about this sort of stuff, but him and the way him and Dad are, he decided not to do it. I'm a bit gutted, to be honest, because we need to talk, me and him. Do you think Luke wants to see his dad? Oh, no. Him and Dad, they just don't get around. Just something between them. It's like, um, Father and son share a unique way of keeping track of their extensive family. That one is Courtney. Rhiannon, and then I'm going to have, like, all of my brothers and sisters come up here and, like, poison ivy, climbing. Oh. I didn't, I didn't grow up with him. I stopped seeing him when I was about four, and I went into the care system. I didn't really believe that he'd give up the drink when he actually did. Then I was a bit more lenient. He seems to be trying a lot more. Mike begins to reminisce about his wilder years and how even babies have their uses. He used to be my pulling thing he did, see, when he was a baby. <laughs> and I picked up a few birds like that. Using me like... <laughs> I was, well, I was, because there's nothing nicer than a single fellow with a little baby. Do you share your dad's views on relationships, then? Oh, no way. It's give and take, really. I don't sleep with someone if I genuinely like them. If they genuinely care about sex. Hmm? It's sex, that's all it is. No, it's not that. You'll sleep with anything that works, I want. If you've got a pulse, yes. Yeah. Sex is sex. You can look at the back of a bus as long as the doggy style. If she's ugly, isn't it? Ah, oh, damn. Ah, oh, see, that's bad, guys, Dad. By 11 pm, Luke has still refused to come home. Right. How do you feel about not seeing Luke tonight? Get him, to be honest. I wanted to see him. My boy, or one of my boys anyway. I got so much love in me for my kids that it's spilling over. Well, I need them more than they need me, to be honest, because I'm not whole without them. Coming up, Nick has a secret admirer and Lauren's not too happy about it. If I had all the men chasing me, yeah. you wouldn't like it. You'd be out that door straight away. No. Yes, you would, Nick. No. Mike receives some bad news about another of his sons. He's left already. They told me. She won't even let me speak to him. Feckler's father of 15, Keith MacDonald, also known as the Sunderland Shagger, is running from his past. His reputation back home in Newcastle in the press as Britain's worst dad has made it difficult for him to find work, but more importantly, it's ruining his chances at meeting new women. So today, he's travelling further afield in the hopes of getting lucky. We're going to Birmingham, the deal. What are we doing in Birmingham? Pulling girls. And he's joined by best mate, Rob. That's when I was out with you, wasn't it? Ah, you were out with Ah, yeah, yeah. People know us in the North East, and men. Them know what your reputation is, that's why you've got to go somewhere else to try and do it somewhere else, isn't it? And considering his track record with getting girls pregnant, when Keith meets new ladies, surely he'll be taking precautions. No, don't use conversation, no. It's like putting a plastic bag in the bathroom with yourself in it. It feels horrible. Ugh. Keith has a tried and tested formula for pulling girls. He claims it's how he's met the majority of his conquests, 
and he's happy to teach his technique to anyone willing to learn. And the key is in the location. I normally meet girls in the bus stop, bus station and around the town and that. And I don't know why I meet them in bus stops for, but it's just random. I don't have a type, really. Some of them are, like, really fat. Put beach wheels, some of them. You see, when I've had too much to drink, you just can't with anybody, don't you? And then you go, oh, no, what have I done? What's she done the four man? You get there, man. With Rob providing moral support, Keith hopes to get some numbers to start making his moves on the local female population. You ask them for the time, and then you get chatting, and then you end up with the lass's number, and then... It's all you do, really. Excuse me, you got the time, please? Have you got the time, please? No, I'm sorry. Keith remembers some of the relationships he's been in more than others. In 2012, he was jailed for assaulting the mother of one of his children. I went to jail because she sees I had a bite of food, scratched all over it, like wrist open, and apparently attacked her friend. I can't remember doing that. In this case, his actions had serious consequences. I'm not allowed to say them or not, but shit happens, don't I? Excuse me, you got the time, please? The magic's not happening today, and Keith has his own theory why. It's very fun with ladies, but see, though, they're all young. Too young for me, like, before I was chatting the one, and trying to look like a kid. So Keith's off to the pub for a bit of Dutch courage. In Newport, serial dad of 10, Nick, and his 20-year-old fiancée, Lauren, are spending the afternoon with their 10-month-old baby, Hudson. But trouble is brewing. You should feel guilty. Never. You should feel guilty. <laughs> Lauren has discovered that Nick has been receiving text messages from another woman. Nick claims she's stalking him. This, this is the first time I've had somebody stalk he's me. A, yeah, it's the first time he's had someone stalk him, but yeah. he does have a lot of girls try it on with him. I do, yeah. I feel, because I'm in the, in the public sector, I feel that... This is what I do for a living. Nick claims his flirting goes hand in hand with working in a pub and that it never goes any further. I basically ignore him, like, you know, I don't, I don't usually text him back. Do you know what? Put, put it the other way, Nick. If I had all the men chasing me yeah. and wanting me and texting me, yeah. you wouldn't like it. You'd be out that door freeway. No. But Lauren has good reason to be suspicious. In the past, Nick's ability to charm the ladies has got him into trouble. He, he has done something in the past. I'm not going to mention it. I'm not going to say what. Um, but I think we had a massive discussion about how I didn't You did, I just listened. I'm gonna go to that minute. Can I get to sleep? Yeah. Oh. For Nick, it's still too awkward to talk about. I said it was over at first and walked out the house. And he told me he was sorry and he didn't want to, he would never do it again and I said okay. He, he's listening and he Nick? <laughs> Nick's wandering eye has led to relationships breaking up in the past, but Lauren's adamant that she'll be the one to change all that. Uh, I do trust him in, like, ways. And look, I still stick by you. Have you got no choice? I have got a choice. I can walk out that door if I wanted to right now. Go on, then. No, I love you too much. <laughs> Wales, father of 40 Mike Holpin, is still on a quest to reconnect with his children. Today, he's at HM Prison Park, hoping to collect another of his 40 kids, 17-year-old Jonathan, who's being released from a six-month sentence for assault. Well, I'm very excited, to be honest, because me and him are quite close. But him, he's so much like me in, in every way. His head's in the shed. But he, he's a good boy. But after waiting for nearly an hour, he's told that Jonathan has already been released to social services. And what's more, for the time being, the authorities are preventing Mike from seeing him. Park Prison, he's left already. They told me. I have to hang up now, Mr. Alvin. Why didn't you kiss my fucking half breed ass? She won't even let me speak to him. I'm painted as this bad father, alcoholic and all this. Yet I'm doing great. And my kids are coming back. 
they don't want it. They told me from the start, I'm never going to get my kid back. Oh, they're never going to let me. But it's the judge to decide, I don't know them. Fuck, cheeky bastards. Mike's battle to get his children back okay, is going to be harder than he thought. I can't make up for what I've done. All I can do is be there for them now. I'll just keep fighting. It's 8 p.m. and baby father Rashan is about to hand on the baton to the next generation. 23-year-old eldest son, Romain. Okay, it's good now to cross. Lesson one, how to look good for the ladies. Yeah. That's some of my friends, them, innit? Everyone known them, man. But yeah. Bless. Every big night begins with a trip to the barbers. This is Andy, the main barber in the shop. This is Jason. When I'm a barber, bless. This is the elder. This man again. One more man next. Main Bridget. Nice guy. Everyone in here, we are like family, we are friends. You're a part of me. Favorite son. <laughs> Favorite sonny. We come out, we have a good time. Get all the girls that are busy and start to wiggy. Looking sharp is vital to impress the ladies. But according to Rashan, a man also has to be careful who he approaches. Some of these women tell me, oh, I'm on the pill, I can't get pregnant. They do get pregnant. They, did, they never used to take the pill. They take the pill out the packet and show me the pack. This is how clever a woman is. If they really want to have a child for you, there is nothing you can do as a man to stop it. But is Rashan merely shifting the blame, or does this really happen? It's later. A big mama. Later. Later. Rasta, come in. Next stop, Caribbean food, where he teaches Romain lesson two. Line your stomach before a big night out. Just gonna get some food to eat now. And then later is the big time for the party. What Rasta, you cool? Touch the dance hall and start party. I'm gonna eat as much as I can. And later, I'm gonna drink as much as I can and I'm going to party and have a good time. Very nice. Rashan loves his kids, and he's keen to teach them the ways of the world. Tonight, it's Romain's turn, and he's in for a treat. <laughs>Port Wales, serial dad of 10 Nick Portman is being visited by his 23-year-old son Ashley and Ashley's 25-year-old fiance Leah, plus their kids, Sienna and Riley. Ashley had his first child age 20. He's already got three kids, which is more than Nick had at his age, and he's planning to have more. The girls take the kids to the park, allowing father and son to spend some quality time together. Pavements. Lauren is three years younger than Nick's son, Ashley, making baby Hudson younger than his nieces and nephews. How are you going to fall asleep on him? Hey, I didn't plan on being the grandmother at um, 20. I think I'm special. The only 20-year-old grandmother in the world. Bad, 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 bad. You know, he's their uncle, and he's younger than two of my kids, but they don't bother me, don't, they don't matter to me. My dad's happy, my dad's happy, you know. Ashley looks up to his dad and aspires to be just like him. I know that he talks about his dad a lot. He idolises it. You, more, you would know more yeah, about that. Yeah, I've got to be honest, he, I'd like, he always says I want to be like my dad. But what are the similarities between Ashley and his dad? You know, he's, he is a flirtatious man. But, uh, yeah, say I am as well, you know, I'll have a couple of drinks, you know, I'll flirt the bit, but, you know, that's, I think that's just men anyway, innit? They've got to aim them just to flirt with women, haven't they? And sadly for Leah, in the past, Ashley has indeed stepped out of line. I've lost a bit of trust for him. I have. I've lost trust for Nick, but I, it's just but building it, it back like, up. Something then... happened not long ago with me and Ashley, he lost a bit more of my trust then. These ladies stand by their men, hoping past mistakes won't be repeated by the next generation. There's something there that's keeping so, us yeah. there, isn't it? And it's, it's not just the kids. Well, it's good, it? it's good, isn't it? But I'm just, I think you just get on with it. I think, like... I love him that much that so I, I, I forgive him for it. It's the first time he ever did it. I forgive him, and he knows if I, if he does it again, he'd be he'd be gone. When do you say having enough children is is that's it? You've had enough. You know you you don't anymore. You can't say that. 
because you never know what's going to happen in the future. You never know about the next person that you meet, the person that you're with. You never know what's around the corner. For now, Nick says he and Lauren are here to stay, and with the likelihood of more children on the way, they hope their relationship will stand the test of time. In Birmingham, Keith MacDonald, the Sunderland shagger, is on the pull. So far, things haven't exactly gone to plan, but Keith hopes his luck is about to change. Oh, she looks out of mine, Bob. One of it with her fears. She out of it, look. Oh, look at her coming up. Keith, no. Keith's love for pulling is stronger than his desire to stick with a relationship. How many of my still friends with uh, my ex-girlfriends and none of them apart from one? And that's the one what's pregnant now. I don't talk to them. Just get on with my own life and get on with theirs. You know what I mean? Oh, she's out of here. No, she's got glasses. Come back. Pass. I didn't see myself having loads of children, though. No. no, I didn't. In the next year or so, what do I want to do? I don't know, really, anything, really, as long as I'm out with mischief. Oh, another fight. <laughs> Keith's bus stop vigil, though, finally pays off. Excuse me, I got my time, please. Uh, can I ask you a question? What's the best place around here for like drinking and stuff like that? Because see, I've never been around here. I'm from like Newcastle, if you can tell by my accent. Yeah, I'm not really too sure around here, to be honest with you. I'd probably just start there. Are you single by any chance? Um, yeah. <laughs> can I have your number? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> For Keith, this is a success. He's managed to get a girl's number and he couldn't be happier about it. <laughs> That's how easy it is to pull on me, man. Class. <laughs> you want the accent one, innit? Aye. That's what you kept on seeing? The way I'm on. That's a mint hat, man. Innit? <laughs> I'll find. Let's see what we'll do with that. It seems Keith's baby making career is far from slowing down. I don't see you tomorrow. Good morning, good evening, good night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in North London, serial dad of 12 Rashan has a night off from looking after the kids, and he's doing what he does best, impressing the ladies. Well, what? Well, cool? Yeah, really? really well. yeah. Um, it's after one now. Yeah, a bit too early. <laughs> but we're going to still go inside and see what's up. The final lesson in the art of seduction is about being the centre of attention and the coolest in the club. I love the outfit, man. I love the outfit. Yeah. Rashawn claims to have met most of his many women on the dance floor, and he can see tonight that there's plenty of talent around. Dancing mean a lot to me. It keep me fit. So when I dance, it's a, it, it's, it's a part of exercising as well. I move my body, I move my feet. I think when you have a nice physique, you know, women always like to look at a man with a nice physique. Rashan's son, Romain, clearly approves of his father's dance floor swagger. He's just having fun, do you know what I mean? It makes everyone else, like, put a smile on, like, oh, he's actually going for it. It's happening It makes everyone, way. like, feel in a good mood, and they're like, yeah, I, you know what? I like this. So what's the secret? Well, I have a quick look. I maybe start from the feet right up to the face. And I maybe look in between with their breasts and I maybe clock, a bit down further and I maybe clock. But if I see a good smile, I will look even harder. Do you know what I call him? I call him Mr. Icebreaker. He can go into anywhere, just the vibes all match it, everyone's happy. Do you know what I mean? Mr. Yeah. Icebreaker. Yes. That's what I'm going to call Love him. him. Mr. Icebreaker. 
Well, what I would like in my future really is to have a big house, maybe 14 bedroom, nice swimming pool, all the kids them, all my family, my baby mothers them, but just hope they will unite together as one. Back in Wales, father of 40 kids, Mike Holpen, has finally received some good news. Yeah, Luke's changed his mind and uh, has agreed to meet Dad, talk things over, see, see how it all goes, isn't it? Well, yeah, I am excited. And apprehensive. He's on scales, isn't it? Could we, we never know. Luke is no longer living with his brother, Mike Jr., and has recently moved in with his girlfriend a few miles away in Pontigueth. So what's this house like? What Luke got? Nice house. It's full of damp. Hi, right, son. It seems Mike's plan to win Luke over with a gift has been a success. Yeah, this is the football. Ah, never used. It's so special, you know, sort of, because my dad bought it for me, and it's the first thing you've ever bought me. He never bought me anything before. He could have done a lot more with the older kids, when it, but back yeah. when we was younger, like. But now we've all grown up, like, you just, it, you don't, you just keep out of it now, like. When, I, when you first met Dad, you were very reluctant to call him Dad. I don't think he ever forgive Dad for not fighting longer. I can forgive him for it, at least I think I can. <laughs> But I don't think Luke will ever truly forgive Dad for it. For Mike, all this soul-searching has helped him see things a little clearer, but just when he was doing so well... When this goes hard, this goes soft. <laughs> and that's a God's honest truth. If I could, I'd have more kids. Oh. I think enough is enough now, I think. Given, like, yeah. I, I am only 56, what? Do you, do you love your dad, Luke? I don't really say I love you, because... You haven't really been, been there. big That's impact right. in my life to say yeah. you haven't, like, you haven't done... I, like, I would, I would cry if you died, but I, I would, I don't think I, I got a lot of love for you. I don't think that. Right. Try outside. Try outside. Try outside. You know what? Yeah, try outside. You know, we talked, we laughed. So, yeah, it went good. It went better than I thought, anyway. Try Awesome. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure if he loves me. I think he... I, I can't really tell if he loves me. Because he got so many, I don't know. I don't know. I know he loves me because I can feel it. Do you think all your kids love you? Yeah. No, I don't love my dad. I don't... Uh, you haven't done enough for me to... You haven't been there. You haven't had enough impact to show that he loves me. Do you think you'll see him again soon? Yeah. I'm hoping now he come down and see me. You think there's a good chance of that? Yeah, definitely now. No, I don't think... I won't see him for a long time, no. I got one goal and, you know, that's to get all my kids home. You know, I had a heart attack six months ago. I didn't feel that heart attack. All I kept saying to him was, I don't want this, I don't want heart attack. I'm not going to have a heart attack because I made a promise to my kids and I'm not going to die until that promise is fulfilled. I don't scare anybody. i got a pain in my chest. Mike is experiencing pains in his chest, which could lead to another heart attack, but he repeatedly refuses assistance from the production team. If, it's, if it don't go now in 15 minutes, I'll have to phone ambulance. You want more kids? Oh, God, yeah, of course I do. I'm, I'm only 56. I, I'd never stop. I'd never stop. It's a close shave, but Mike will live to fight right. another day. Yeah, I'd be all right now. But will he live long enough to receive forgiveness from the many children he's left behind? Fucking hell, Dad. You shouldn't smoke about you do like that. In the Bible, God says go forth and multiply. And do what God wants. So you're religious? No, God, no. 